Hey everyone, uh, so in this video we're going to make something like this. This is a TK inter user interface written in Python, but I did not write any other code. So what it does is it takes an actually here it explains itself. This program adds the first two numbers and multiplies the result by the third number. So you enter a first number and the second number, two and three. So it's going to add it up. That's going to be five. And let's say five times four, which is going to be 20, written output it right here. As you can see, it's able to resize its elements. Kind of cool. So uh, no code. Uh, Copilot wrote it for me. We're going to try to replicate it. Here I tried uh, open OpenAI Codex to write one as well. And this is what it looks like. It, uh, it didn't get the resizing right, but still it works. Let's see, two, three, and four. See, the, the outcome is 20. All right. So let's begin. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this one. So to be able to do this, see, uh, one, uh, one thing I notice is that when you're working with Copilot, GitHub Copilot, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's good that you... Uh, consider what you're going to build ahead of time and think of all the elements that you're going to need and have a general view of your project. So uh, the, this uh, small little TK inter interface wasn't like a big project or anything like that, but I just thought, okay, what do I want? So I want th three input fields. What uh, need a button that's going to execute the function uh, once the button is clicked. I wanted the output to be printed and uh, stuff like that. So let's just start. Uh, so once you have something like that in mind, we can just start typing out what we need. So I'm just going to say TK inter window. Let's just even specify 600 by 400 pixels. And then let's make another comment. Uh, the window has three input fields and a button, fine. See, it's also helping me complete the uh, comments. This is, this is really cool because as you type more, the more information it receives, actually your job gets uh, easier and easier. So we're not gonna write any code. Uh, at most, we're gonna be writing some uh, comments. Okay, so first input field is added. Okay, the first input field is added to the second input field and the result is multiplied by the third input field. That's correct. Uh, it wants to suggest that the result is displayed in the output field. Yep, that's correct. The output field is updated when a button is pressed. Yeah, that's, that's all right. The output field is placed in the second row of the window. Uh, sure, but before then, I, I, let me specify the elements. Okay, this is exactly what I want. The elements in the window resize when the window is resized. That's also what we want. There's a padding. Hey, uh, sorry, I actually accidentally uh, paused the video without realizing. So I'm just going to continue where we left off. Uh, the elements in the window resize when the window is resized right next one uh, it wants to suggest the 50, 50 pixel padding around the window we'll take that uh, window is created with a title and a row and column configurations we'll we'll just uh, skip that for now and uh, actually let's go and just say import so that there's no cue the copilot to tell it that okay well you know just start writing some code uh, we'll just say import, make a space. It's importing TK enter as TK. And we're just going to accept uh, everything it says to us from this point on. You can pause and read exactly what it says, but I'll try to go over some of them. But we're going to go over them quickly. So this is the uh, function that uh, does the calculation. It's a calculate function. And it does what it says. It takes three of the numbers, adds the first two, and then multiplies it by the third one. Good. That's good so far. It's going to create a TK interview info. It wants to add a doc string. We'll take that. 
can take a look at the dock screen. Just going to continue. Who wants to take care of the size, resizing and the padding? That's fine. It's going to add four rows and five columns with mean size of 50 pixels. This is the padding. Now it's creating the input fields, but it's going to make a lot of comments, which is actually nice, in my opinion. Because we started with a lot of comments, and it continues the tradition. This is usually what a uh, programmer probably wants to see when looking at somebody else's code. So this is the first entry. And here is the second one. Let's continue. This is going to be the third one. This is a quicker way to do this, but I just want you to see it line by line. Button. All right. Here comes the button. It's assigning all the rows and columns. We'll see. Hopefully, it does a good job of it. Now this is the output field, which is going to display the result once we click the, once we've inputted the inputs and then click the uh, button to calculate. This is the output field, right? It looks good to me, and this is it. So, I mean, we haven't written a single line of code ourselves. Let's run it and see what happens. Oh, let me close this. Try again. Here we go. This is it. Okay, it kind of did put the calculate at an odd spot, but let's see if it actually really works. Two, three, and four. This should give us two plus three, which is five, times four, which is 20. Here we go, 20. So, but as you see, it didn't put the text description uh, let me try. Yeah, so it didn't put the description of what the program wants to do. So let's just come here. That is under the output field. So I'm just going to come here and make a comment saying that there is a text which dis describes, I'm going to say, it describes the program. Let's see if it'll add it. It did. Let's see if it works. Actually, this program adds, so its description is that this program adds the first two numbers and multiplies the result by the third number. So that's correct so far. Let's see. Okay. This is great. The placement of the calculate is a bit off. But other than that, it's uh, fantastic with the description and all. We could actually fix this. Uh, if we go back into the code, it just uh, it probably placed the column situation wrong uh, as far as where the label is. Uh, see, while well, it's positioning the label of number two, this is column two, and then the button because it positioned it on column two. But row one. We could definitely try to fix that. Well, let's, let's give it a go. You know what? Let's uh, let's do something interesting then. Now that we know it's working, let's just see it one, one more time. Oh, I should close the uh, one that was open before. And is the, here is the new one. So it does work. It does resize. So it did what we asked it to do. The only problem is that the alignment is a bit off. So let's try to fix it by uh, bringing this um, into uh, OpenAI's playground with Code Da Vinci. I'm just going to use the edit function. Let me just, this is something from before. So I just clear all that and paste the entire code here. Okay. And here at the bottom, I'm going to specify that the alignment 
alignment of the second input label and the button is off. Fix it. Let's see what it does. Let's lower the temperature a little bit. Okay, so this is what it did. Uh, I'm not sure if it actually is a row zero, column two, the button. Actually, it did, I believe it changes column. Well, let's see. Let's copy this. Let's bring it back up, row window. Here we go. Let's run it. Now, uh, it just brought the button to the left, which is not what we wanted. Let's try it one more time. I'm just going to say fix the alignment of elements so that everything is nice and centered in the window and symmetrical. Let's see if it understands it. Why not? Let's give it another go. Okay, this is the result. I'm just gonna quickly copy and paste it. See if it had changed anything. No, it hadn't. Okay, you know what? Let's try it one last time. And then after that, we'll just call it off. Well, let's give it a higher temperature and the same thing again. Okay, this is it. Let's cross our fingers and try it. Yeah, it kind of it kind of changed it back, but now it screwed up the resizing of the second and third element. But uh, these are, I mean, if we really got in, get involved with the code and debug it ourselves, uh, we would easily be able to fix it. But uh, this wasn't the point of this video. At least you have a functional interface without writing any code. Uh, this is great for learning by practicing and actually building interfaces, in my opinion. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And next, uh, I'll try to do some more interesting and complex stuff. Have a good one.